Boeing says there's never any, going to be anything like a routine ascent, and certainly not for the people who are getting to have go to one for the first time. Well, that's certainly true. There's some people out there going through for the first time. What's happening now is that a few minutes ago they started the auxiliary power units. These are little motors on board that point the rockets in the right direction, and that was a crucial milestone because those were the things that caught on fire during the last space shuttle mission, during the ascent, and then during the landing and caused some concern. NASA assures us that those have been repaired, and that those, like everything else, are looking very good for the launch right now, Brian. Those computers were simply jarred out. Is that right, Bob, that there, there was a bit of solder that problems. was jarred out? There were two problems. One was the auxiliary power units. The other was a computer problem. The computer problem, they say, has also been fixed. It was a little piece of solder, as you said, that got jarred out during the ascent. You and Dr. Fisher talked about this one proceeding um, smoothly. I, I asked this of the both of you. Considering the problems uh, of the past year, the delays with, with shuttles and, and, and various little glitches, how important was it to NASA to have one that went off without a hitch? Well, I think we always want uh, our launches to go off on time, and uh, we're very pleased that this uh, mission is going off at, at schedule. But Bob, from a practical standpoint, was it terribly important, do you think? Oh, I think everyone is important, and this certainly was after the problems that were so publicized on the last ones. They're having a little other scheduling problems uh, in the future. Dr. Fisher's mission may or may not be postponed. It was scheduled for October, but for this morning, we're, we're coming up on two minutes away. Right now, everything is being run by a computer called a ground launch sequencer. Uh, the people on the ground no longer are making any decisions. They're just watching the panels to make sure that everything keeps working. We should note, and, and I hope, uh, in case you said it earlier that I'm not repeating this for others, that this is the first of, of 10 launches for 1984. Bob, I had said as we came on the air uh, this morning that this was in, in many ways the most ambitious shuttle mission to date. Would you agree with that? Well, it's certainly ambitious in terms of what NASA calls the extravehicular activity or the two men who are going to go out in those jet backpacks. In other ways, it's somewhat routine in that they're launching communication satellites like they've done before, and things are moving along pretty well for NASA right now. It is NASA's way, I, I would suspect, to to play down any risk involved. Um, from your point of view, how much risk are McCandless and Stewart going to be taking with those MMUs? What do you think about that, Dr. Fisher? Do you think there's a lot of risk in flying out in space, not being attached? Well, there's some risk, but again, I think NASA has really tested those manned maneuvering units, and we have uh, backup procedures if they were to fail to recover them with the orbiter, so I don't think uh, any of us are real worried. Bryant, uh, we're coming up now on one minute. A key thing to watch for as we go to Mark Hess, the voice of NASA control, as at T-minus 31, that's when the computers on board take over, and if we pass that milestone, everything works very good. And again, as Bob noted, the uh, countdown now being controlled by ground launch sequence in Florida, and then once the orbiter clears the tower, it will be picked up and controlled by the uh, Johnson, folks at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. These things have become routine to many, but they continue to be electric for most. So we'll shut up and listen to Mark Hess at Shuttle Launch Control. T-minus, 42 seconds and counting. T-minus 38 seconds, orbiter computers positioning, vent doors to launch configuration. Coming up on a go to take over control by the onboard computers. And we have a go for auto sequence start. T-minus 23 seconds and counting. Orbiter computers now in command of the countdown. T-minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We have a go for main engine start. Six, five, we have main engine start. Three, two, one, zero. We have solid rocket booster ignition and liftoff of Challenger and the 10th space shuttle flight. And the shuttle has cleared the tower.
2,300 feet per second. And altitude 11 nautical miles, downrange distance 9 nautical miles. Right, as you can see from that picture, it's a cloudless day here at Cape Canaveral. Absolutely gorgeous. Your separation complete as we as we see uh, Challenger lifting off. As we look at the replay one more time, Bob Bazell, I had um, I had noted that these things have become routine to many. You've seen all of them, if if I'm correct. Are they still electric to you? They are. And today was a particularly beautiful one because, as I said, there were no clouds in the sky here. Also, it was very humid, so that this is something that I've always wished we could transmit on television. There's an enormous crackling sound, and then you feel it. You feel it in your chest. The force of all that explosive power lifting all that weight, four and a half million tons going up into the into the air there, four and a half million pounds, I should say. And it it is a spectacular sight. And today it was even more so. Well, it's especially spectacular when it goes off without a hitch, as this one did. And as noted, once the uh, shuttle cleared the tower, as it has now, we're now almost four minutes into the launch, it then becomes the responsibility of the folks at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Standing by out there is our NBC correspondent, Roy Neal. Roy, what did the folks think out there? Well, Bryant, while that Cape launch team settles back for a little relaxation, here in Houston, the flight controllers are sitting on the edge of their seats. There's still about four more minutes of burn on those main engines before the spacecraft Challenger really gets into orbit. And uh, so uh, they're nearing that point right now where the ship can no longer return to the Cape. If uh, something were to go wrong, it would have to go clean around the world and land in California. So obviously, they're watching very carefully, and that is why the mission controllers are a little on edge right now. They don't show it. We're listening to the voice of Steve Nesbitt in mission control for the last few minutes. He sounds very normal. Flight director Gary Cohen the same way, and Guy Gardner is now talking to Vance Brand and Hoot Gibson aboard the spacecraft. Uh, Ron McNair, by the way, the mission specialist. Ron McNair is up on the flight deck with the pilot and the commander. Uh, down below, the spacewalking astronauts, Bruce McCandless and uh, Bob Stewart, are seated. They're passengers at this stage of the game. Later on, of course, they'll be all important. But right now, Houston's mission control is uh, watching the flight very carefully, and they are in control. Roy, I'm curious. Are the folks at Houston as excited about the Star Wars aspects of this mission as the rest of us seem to be? Yes, despite the atmosphere that they try to exude, which is one of total confidence. They're excited. As a matter of fact, during pre-flight interviews, I talked with the astronauts themselves. And when pressed, when pressed, uh, Bryant, McCandless and uh, Stewart are the first to admit that this will be exciting for them, too. Okay, Roy Neal, thank you very much. And so uh, we are now almost six minutes into the launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger, this being the fourth liftoff of that orbiter. Launch went off as scheduled, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Let's take a look at it one we more time with audio being start. supplied by Mark Six, Hess of five, Shuttle Launch Control. Main engine start. Three, two, one, zero. We have solid rocket booster ignition and liftoff of Challenger and the Shuttle flight. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Tower, program. Houston now controlling. Roll maneuver. Roll maneuver confirmed. 15 seconds. Good roll confirmed by mission control. 20 seconds. 25 seconds. 
So the liftoff of Challenger is successful.